Hi guys, Florian here. Have you ever wondered how your online order travels around the globe with precision and speed? How can DHL's innovations enhance and improve our everyday life? Today, I'll dive into the potential behind DHL, exploring not only the key financial indicators, but also the impact of their focus on cutting edge technologies like robotics and AI. Let's have a look at the fact sheet first. So DHL has the ticker symbol of DHL, surprise, on the Xetra stock exchange and DHL GY on the OTC. They are operating in the logistics sector, were founded in 1490 and have almost 600,000 employees worldwide. Their headquarter is in Bonn, Germany and their market cap sits around 48 billion US dollar. Before we dive into the innovations and the financial financials of the company, let's have a look at the general market first. So when we look at the couple of different market reports for the global logistics market, we can see that they estimate the, the CAGR up until 2032 or 2030-ish of around 5.6% or down here it's 4.7%. So I would average this out as around 5%, maybe a little bit higher than 5%. Um, you can see this is always for the whole freight and logistics market. And the major players in these markets is um, DHL, FedEx, UPS. And then we have Maersk and CMA, ZGM. But um, these two are mostly operating in the maritime shipping market. When we have a look at DHL segments, we can see that um, the whole DHL and Deutsche Post um, consists of five different segments. Four of them are combined in the DHL and the Post and Parcel Germany service is actually the part of Deutsche Post. For DHL, the Express segment is by far the biggest one with 45%, followed by the Forwarding and Freight segment with 26%, Supply chain segment of around 10% and the smallest at the moment is still the e-commerce sector with only 4% share. When we look at the biggest segment, the express segment, we can see that worldwide DHL is by far the biggest player. If you look at the different regions, you can see in Europe higher than 50% market share, MEA higher than 60% market share and even Asia Pacific higher than 50% uh, market share. Only in the Americas um, the market share is a bit lower with 21%. When looking at the global picture we can see that DHL is the biggest player in most of these markets. So they definitely have a very strong market position and even if we compare the different um, individual segments in most of their segments, they are also market leader or very close second. DHL has an impressive focus on um, ESG criteria and on innovations for especially robotics and automations, but also AI as we will see later. Right now in the plant, you can see in the video, this is a um, quite newly built plant in the US. Uh, it was just built in 2018. And with this highly automated processes, they could bring up the efficiency of uh, by 40% compared to more manual plants. But it's not only the efficiency why they are doing this. It's also the prevention of package loss with these highly automated and better tracking systems. And also a focus on the worker health and safety. Um, with these higher automated and more robotic systems, they don't have to lift such heavy objects anymore. Um, it can be done by, by the robots also. The processing and delivery speed is definitely increased with this more automation. The customer of DHL have the advantage um, that they are more in line with DHL, especially in the B2B segment. DHL has Im uh, implemented a couple of tracking tools and, and API tools that their customers can use to really see in detail where their deliveries are at the moment, what the problems are, also the, the potential for time improvement. Besides robotic and automation, there is another trend that could um, bring the efficiency in the logistics industry to whole new levels. And this is the development of a new generation of airships. 
Here you can see, for example, uh, the company LTA Research, which was founded by Sergey Brin, one of the original founders of Google. And they are developing a new generation of airships with a focus on logistics and um, freight operations. The big advantage of these airships compared to regular planes is the, the very high fuel efficiency that can be operated even electrically, so without any fuel at all. That means also CO2 neutral. And they are also don't need any infrastructure or many infrastructure. So for example, here you can see um, it's an airship of flying whales. And in this render, it, it is dropping off um, cargo in the middle of an uh, Antarctic city. So here it doesn't need any infrastructure at all to just drop off the cargo. Of course, for loading the cargo, it's something different. Um, but still, the infrastructure even for um, that is necessary for loading is much simpler, much cheaper and much smaller footprint compared to the infrastructure necessary for air uh, airplanes. This trend is still in a very early stage. Um, so it's nothing that DHL can benefit right now. But I will definitely observe where this is going in the next years. And I think if uh, these companies are successful in developing a commercial um, viable air uh, airship, um, DHL can definitely uh, benefit from this by improving their efficiency and bringing their uh, and reaching their ESG and and green targets much easier. So here you can see this is the focus on digitalization. We already saw the warehouse robotics. Um, these are these autonomous driving lorries which can bring these packages to um, different parts of the of the plant to other parts. They have Internet of Things and assessed tracking uh, possibilities, uh, even on individual package basis. They are working on route optimization and last mile delivery. This is the, the classic traveling salesman problem and AI will have a huge impact on this. And I believe that DHL is already working with AI tools to improve this. They have digital customer touch points. These are the APIs that I mentioned before. So to bring their customers closer in the loop. And they also have some back office automations through analytics and AI, which also will help the customers in the end if they have better, better analytic um, options um, that can, can bring up the efficiency also on the customer spaces. And also you can see here, they are working with Gaia AI together on implementing these AI solutions, not only in the software systems, but also in their warehouse systems in the end. When we have a look at the port of five forces for DHL, I would think that the threat of new entrants is quite low in this case uh, because of the network effects and the high capex that is necessary for new players to enter this global logistics market. I would think that the threat of substitutes is very high because it's mainly a price and service driven market. And at least the big players are almost on par here. The competitive rivalry for the same reasons is again quite high uh, because the, the big, big players are interchangeable between each other and the bargaining power of their customers is also quite high because they're operating close to the consumer. So it's a um, price sensitive market. Um, if one of the competitors uh, lowers the price, it's easy for the customers to switch uh, to another player. Actually, DHL is also working on this by providing additional services and um, yeah, additional services for the customers to lock them in in their ecosystem. So they uh, so it's not as easy as uh, as today for the customers to switch to to other competitors. The bargaining power of their suppliers, I would think, is medium. They don't have so many suppliers. Um, it's mainly like um, fuel and software stuff that they need. Uh, but again, because these uh, softwares and everything is very designated for the operation of DHL, um, they do have definitely some power here. So the overall mode of DHL, I would uh, regard as medium. It's definitely possible for DHL to be replaced by other logistics companies, but it's not as easy as you would think. When we have a look at the risk factors and the growth prospects, I think 
the biggest risk, risk factors are a slowdown in globalization or even localization. It's um, a dependency on the infrastructure. That means that DHL is dependent on the roads and also the airports that the governments are building up in the countries they're operating in. Um, we saw that China um, is a big market for DHL, Asia Pacific, and um, China's economy is declining right now. So this will definitely have an impact on the global forwarding business, especially. The logistics sector is a cyclical industry, and right now we are in a kind of a downtrend. Amazon is building a new in-house logistics as a new player in this field, and they are picking up market shares. It's still a very small player, but um, we need to watch how they will develop in the next years. If Amazon is only using their in-house logistics for deliveries for Amazon products, this might be a big hit for DHL in the future. And the fuel pr prices um, are also a big factor for them uh, because, of course, this logistics business is vastly dependent on, on the fuel. On the other hand, the growth prospects is the growth through e-commerce and globalization. So this is exactly the opposite of the slowdown in globalization. Um, when looking especially in the long run for the next 10 years or so, and I always view my investments as a long-term investor. I think that the e-commerce sector will grow again and I also think that the globalization will go on. Um, I think we are right now in a, in a decline, but over the long run I think this will normalize again. Also the growth in global popula population will also help to get these logistics companies more business because more people want to have stuff delivered. They have network effects and as we saw they are the biggest player in most of their markets so of course DHL has the biggest network effects in this case and they bring additional value to the customers with these analytics analytics tools digitalization and automation and also it increases the efficiency of DHL in the end DHL is quite a diversified player in the logistics markets they offer different services and over the global markets basically so they are a global player and support almost all services necessary in the logistics sector and their focus on esg criteria and also co2 saving can help their customers in the end to lower the co2 footprint of the customers of dhl um, that is also one of the reasons, I think, why they are focusing so much on these ESG criteria and going um, or making DHL greener in the future. Let's jump into the financials. Here we can see the Q3 report that was just released by beginning of November um, from, from DHL. <clears throat> and we can see uh, um, on the first glance, it seems like a very worrying trend. We can see here is a year over year decline of 32% EBIT. And if you look at the different segments again, we can see that all segments except the supply chain segment is declining. And especially the express segment, which is the biggest one, has also a decline of one third on a year over year basis. So when we dig a little bit more into the details here, we can see that the operating profit and the net income in the last two years, 2021 and 2022, we had a big jump up from the years before. And right now, 2023, it brings it down a little bit again. Um, so the forecast for the next year is increasing again. Uh, so the picture to me looks like we had in 2021 and 2022, we had some huge outliers to the upside. And in 2023, it normalizes again. And in the next years, the uptrend will continue again. The uh, same is true for the net margin and operating margin here, actually. And I just put this red line in here as a, kind of a very rough extrapolation. So um, you can see that the uptrend is still intact if we remove the two outliers from the last two years. Also, DHL themselves, they say that they are on track to, to deliver their 2023 guidance. That means especially the free cash flow, they are on track to deliver the 3 billion euro target 
that they set for themselves. Um, they are continuing with a share buyback program. They have bought back 1.8 billion euros uh, of shares already. And until the end of 2024, so one year from now, they want to increase this by 1.2 billion euros again. Uh, this is going on already. Also, uh, the dividend payments of this year in 2023 were um, a total of 2.2 billion euros. So this is definitely covered by their free cash flow, which is quite good. Um, even though we could see this uh, decrease um, on a year over year basis, uh, the overall picture for DHL to me looks still very healthy. Um, also, DHL has a huge focus on um, returns for their investors. So they are paying a roughly 5% dividend yield, or at least they paid a 5% dividend yield by November 7th when this was uh, reported. Right now it's a little bit lower than that, but still uh, very good. And they are very strongly committed to, the, to their dividends. So they are always targeting a payout ratio of 40 to 60%. And over the last 10 years, they were very in line with this trend. Also, I already mentioned this share buyback program. So in the last years and even next year, they are buying back shares, um, which in the end also hires the return for their investors. When we jump to my checklist, we can actually see that the five-year CAGR um, for the revenue growth is 8% which is higher than my 6% target. So we have a green checkbox here. Uh, the year over year value declined a little bit, but not as significant um, as we saw the EBIT decline. Um, these are trailing 12 months numbers. So by end of this year, I would expect that these values are um, increased a little bit, um, but still, I also expect that in the next years, uh, they will recover again and the growth will continue. The net income also on a year over year basis, it's unfortunately negative, but on a five year basis, it's still higher than 10% my target. So it's a green checkbox. Same as for the free cash flow growth. And here we can see that the year over year value was a huge increase compared to next year. We will have a look at the free cash flow numbers in more detail later on. And the five year, five year CAGR was also 22% here, which is definitely a big green checkbox for me. The free cash flow yield is also quite high at 5.2%. So again, green checkbox. And the balance sheet is very clean. They don't have much debt. So the leverage is only 1.3 times debt against EBITDA. Again, green checkbox for me. DHL is paying a steady dividend. Um, as of today, it's 4.75%. Um, not the 5% that they mentioned in their report. And the five-year CAGR is 12.07%. So this is also very nice to see. Green checkbox for me. And the margin, margins and return of invested capital is also kind of stable. In the last year, it did decrease a little bit again. But still, if you look at the five-year or 10-year trend, it's very stable. So again, green checkbox for me. And I think this is the right time to, to mention that I am already invested in DHL. So my opinion might be a little bit biased here. Please keep that in mind and do your own uh, research and analysis. I am invested since quite some time in DHL already and I'm still very happy with this company. So when we have a look at my fair value calculation of DHL, I plugged in the numbers as of today here. You can see that my estimation of the free cash flow growth rate in the future is much lower compared to the numbers that we just saw in my checklist. Same is true for the net income growth rate and the same is actually true for the dividend growth rate. Uh, the reason for this is if we look at the net income and the free cash flow um, of the last 10 years, you can see that we had a huge jump here from 2020 to 2021. And this is the major reason why all these gross numbers are so insanely high. Um, this is uh, the uh, pandemic effects, basically. And I don't expect that the DHL can repeat this in the near future. So I brought down these numbers um, to, from my point of view, much more realistic numbers. For the dividend growth rate, again, 
if you look at Seeking Alpha dividend history of DHL, you can see that the dividends they pay, they pay a, a stable dividend, but it's fluctuating a little bit from, from year to year. So it's not increasing every year. Um, the reason for this is because DHL is more focused on keeping their, their payout ratio between 40 and 60% in this area. And they are not so much focused on increasing the dividend each year. But that also means, for example, between 20, uh, 2010 and um, yeah, 2017, 2018, there was not such a big dividend growth. And for this reason, I also think that um, this 12% that we saw in the last five years might not be repeated in the future, at least not on a regular basis. Um, therefore, I bring down the growth rate to, to much lower volumes, with, which I find more realistic. So when plugging in all these numbers, we can see that we arrive at a fair value um, without margin of safety of around... Um, 30 to 50, I would honestly remove this line because it seems to me like a like an outlier. And the reason for this is mostly because the price to free cash flow multiple of DHL is quite low. Um, therefore, this leads also to a, a lower value when you use the price to free cash flow to calculate your terminal value for the discounted cash flow analysis. <clears throat> um, all the other cases are between 35 and 50-ish um, dollar and when including the margin of safety we come at around 33 to 50-ish um, again. The current stock price of DHL sits at 41 um, dollars. So it's um, a little bit on the high end side and we can see also that there is a, a resistance value at 35 and a bigger resistance um, area at, at 30. Um, so at the moment I find DHL a little bit on the expensive side. Um, as I mentioned, I'm already invested. I will not buy any new shares at the moment. I would rather wait until they come down to 35 to 30, somewhere in this region. Um, if they come down here again, I will definitely consider um, purchasing some more shares. When looking at the um, valuation, PE and price to cash flow, we can see in the last five years, um, all these valuation metrics have a clear downtrend. So at the moment, DHL seems to be very cheap, almost as cheap as they have never been before. Even if you look at the 10 years of this, um, be a bit careful because um, in the past we had quite high price to free cash flow ratios. So unfortunately it's not that visible again, but still you can see that there is a clear downtrend in valuation also for the, for the PE ratio. Um, one thing to mention here is definitely that it's hard to compare these, um, these valuation metrics with US companies, because US companies are usually much higher valued compared to German companies. So I would not expect these, um, these metrics to come up to some values that we can see for, for FedEx or for UPS, for example. If you did manage to watch my video until here, please consider leaving a like and maybe even subscribe to the channel. And please tell me your comments and your opinions down below. Do you agree with my thesis or do you have any other opinions? Also. Please keep in mind that this is no investment advice. I am an engineer, not a financial advisor. Um, I do this analysis for, for fun and for educational purpose only. Before investing in anything, please do your own analysis. And keep in mind that the investment in stocks or any other securities always involves the loss of capital. With that being said, thank you very much for watching, guys, and see you next week. Bye-bye.